people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say that's the bad guy. The undisputed super featherweight champion of the world, Alicia the Bumgarner. Alicia has her fans uh, tricked and they're delusional. But you're not. That's it. They're delusional. She got them tricked. Oh, so? Um, And her fans are nothing but some horny guys who not going to put their ass in seats. They're not going to pay any money to come watch her fight. Oh, how many of your fans tuned in to watch you fight Marie Eve DeCare on pay-per-view? What were the numbers for that fight? But they'll definitely tune in when she posts them half naked ass pictures and and them posts and all that stuff. Like they'll tune in, they'll like that. Fucking right, they will because she's fucking hot. But when she fought up in Detroit, four thousand five hundred seats, two thousand people was there. And how many people were there when you fought Christina Hammer? How many people were there when you fought Marie Eve D. Care? So it's not really about social media following. It's about. Are you actually likable to where people want to come and support you? <laughs> you want to talk about being likable. And I'm sorry, you can have a million Instagram followers and you, and if people don't like you, they're not willing to come and spend their money with you and they don't support you for real reasons for what you want to be supported for, then she's never going to be a fighter that can sell tickets until she actually do something worthwhile, like fight against Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor, myself, Sh Sh uh, Chantel Cameron. Hold the fucking phone. Because you weren't doing any kind of numbers, you weren't selling anything until you fought Savannah Marshall, and you had to go to the UK to do it. Clarissa Shields very recently sat down with Champ Side Boxing, and as you can see, she had some choice words for Alicia Baumgartner, citing her feminine wiles, her her aesthetic, her beauty, because she is beautiful, her sex appeal, because she does have it. Only in reference to women fighters, women athletes. Do you hear this used as a negative? I mean, if you ask Anthony Joshua's female fans what they like about him, they'll tell you. If you ask Ryan Garcia's young female fans why they're following, why do they support him even though they don't watch much boxing? They'll tell you. It's because they're attracted to those fighters. They like the way they look. Well, the same applies to Alicia and some of her fans. So why is that a negative? What's wrong about that? You're free to like a fighter for whatever reason you like a fighter, whether it's their boxing or where they're from, their human an interest story or in some instances their aesthetic that's why oscar de la hoya had so many fans coming out of the olympics he was like a rock star like a member of menudo of course you had people who were fans of him and his boxing but you had a lot of female fans that wanted to give him a little slice of pussy and they gave him a little slice of pussy what's wrong with that everybody likes pussy you bring it up as a negative that some of alicia's fans support her because of her looks but you wouldn't bring that up as a negative when it comes to a male boxer a man you only bring it up because she's a woman and that's a double standard coming from a woman no less saying that alicia doesn't have real fans because she doesn't sell if that's the case you don't have real fans either because you don't sell you can't get out there with just anybody and sell you didn't you can't hold it against alicia that she's playing small shows smaller locations like the masonic temple when you fought at the masonic temple you didn't pack out the house any more than she did and don't bring up the savannah marshall fight in the uk because it was in the uk for a reason what do you think, that all those people that showed up just showed up to see you? None of them were there for Savannah. You did all that by yourself. Then do it again. I'll bet she can't. There's a reason that Clarissa Shields has to periodically transition from boxing over to mixed martial arts, and it's because she doesn't make that much money as a boxer. That's why she fights so infrequently. Her and Katie Taylor debuted as professionals at the same time in the same year, and you will notice that Katie fights a lot more often than Clarissa does. Makes a lot more money than Clarissa does. Campaigns in more densely populated divisions has more opponent options, better ones, than Clarissa does, where Clarissa has to fight in two sports to make ends meet. Simple question. If Clarissa were making the kind of money that 
Katie Taylor is making. Do you think she would have ever transitioned into mixed martial arts? She made it clear what motivated the move. Money. She's doing it for money. And if she were making the kind of money from one sport that she has to try to make in two, do you think she would have transitioned at all? No, absolutely not. So she's in no position to talk about Alicia's marquee value or the lack thereof when you're a lot more accomplished than she is as a boxer, but your marquee value really isn't much better than hers. You're a two-time GOAT medalist, you've been an undisputed champion three times, and your marquee value really isn't much better than hers. If not for her, nobody would even be talking about you right now. The most anybody's talked about Clarissa Shields in recent weeks and months is due to a Baumgartner fight, and if not for that, nobody would be talking about her at all because not that many people pay attention to the divisions where Clarissa campaigns. That's harsh. So is saying that all of Alicia Baumgartner's fans only follow her because they've got hard dicks. Some do. And some people like her for who she is and how she fights and how she carries herself. It's not written anywhere on any tablet of stone that you can only support a fighter for X amount of reasons. And you're one to talk about being liked and being supported when most people don't like you and don't support you. Find you annoying. If you don't want to take it from me, you don't have to. Go on, ask around. Take Take an independent poll. See what the results are. I dare you. I'm not telling you that Alicia Baumgartner is a huge superstar just yet, or that she can get out there with just anybody and sell a bunch of tickets. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you that the same applies to Clarissa. She's in no position to talk. And there ain't no little kids around here, so let's all be adults about this. Alicia's an attractive woman. For that reason alone, some people are gonna follow her, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's the same with music as it is in movies and television. Some people follow celebrities and athletes because of their aesthetic. Why should that be held against her? You could never tell Clarissa Shields that because what it will devolve into is a shouting match where she tries to talk over you to tune you out. Like she did Alicia. And it is those childish behaviors that make Clarissa so unlikable, so unmarketable. You're jealous. Because she's just about as popular as you are, but you're the two-time gold medalist, you're the three-time undisputed champion, and you don't have any more of a following than she does. That's because of how likable she is and how likable you're not. In men's welterweight news, I'm sure you've heard the big news by now that Jaron Ennis has made the move. The big move, the move over to Matchroom so that he can earn with Eddie Hearn. This was unexpected. Very recently, Jaron Ennis won his lawsuit against Now Boxing, his old promoter, the late Cameron Duncan, in order to achieve free agency and compensation for fights that he never got, that he was supposed to be more active, but because he wasn't, that constituted a breach of contract. We talked about that in my previous video, videos. And I thought the first thing he was gonna do was jump into bed with the PBC. I didn't think he was gonna go to match room, though I advised several times that he should. The main reason being fight dates. Matchroom has more fight dates and more opportunities to get Jaron Ennis out there than the PBC comparatively. And for a fighter who already fights so infrequently and isn't really known, what he needs more than anything is activity, more opportunities to get out there and show people what he can do because enough people don't know him, don't know about him. The more you fight, the more you're talked about, the more your profile. Raise your profile. So because Boots is now with Matchroom, am I all of a sudden gonna become a big Jaron Ennis fan, a big Boots fan, because I've been critical of him for a long while now. Is that about to change? Is Ring IQ about to become a big Boots fan? Not yet. He still has to give me a reason to. He still has to give me a reason to become a big supporter of him. The silver lining is this move gives him a chance to do that. A chance I don't think he would have had over there at the PBC. A better chance. And what about his opponents? You may be asking yourself. If he's with Matchroom, what opponents are they going to be able to get him? They'll find him somebody. The opponent options at the PBC were not really that much better or so much better that he should stick with them and go with them instead of Matchroom. Who are we really talking about? A sparsely active Amantis Stanionis, a sub-level opponent in Mario Barrios. These are not high-profile fights. These are not high-profile names. These are not names or career-defining fights where Jaron Ennis should have made a commitment 
to the PBC. He fights those guys, he beats those guys. What do you think happens? He turns into a superstar? He doesn't. And he would be favored to win the both of those fights if the PBC were even able to make both those fights in a timely fashion. And therein lies a dilemma. I don't think they would have. They ain't got the resources to do that. Bottom line, potential fights with a Montestanionis, a Mario Barrios are not big enough opportunities that you should attach yourself to that outfit, what could be that sinking ship. It's not good enough. Bottom line. And don't get too attached to the idea that other fighters might not jump ship at the PBC because a lot already have. You're talking about Deontay Wilder, Frankie Sanchez, Michelle Rivera, Elvis Rodriguez, IBF champion Subriel Matias. Well, Boots wasn't ever a PBC fighter. Not saying that he was. I just know that a lot of PBC fans, PBC stands and Hamanites were hoping that he would be. We're hoping that that's where Boots would end up. <laughs> Sorry, it's not gonna happen. And what says that fighters like a Montestinionis and fighters like Mario Barrios don't end up jumping ship too? You don't know what the future holds because the future of the PBC is uncertain. Let's not act like this is good news for the people that have been supporting Jaren Ennis. Let's not waste each other's time here. A lot of guys that have been talking up Jaren Ennis have been doing so on the premise that he would one day become a PBC fighter, that at some point that would be made official. A lot of guys who've been supporting Jaren Ennis, even though he was never with the PBC officially, because he was fighting on PBC shows, on Showtime, back when Showtime was in boxing, because he was fighting in those shows, a lot of these guys, they talked about him like he was with the PBC. They viewed him as being a PBC fighter, and if nothing else, that's where they wanted him to go. Do you think they're celebrating this news? Underneath it all, do you think they're rejoicing that he went to the zone? Fuck no. Hell no. This is not what they wanted for all those guys who run around saying the PBC runs boxing. I don't think Jaron Ennis went to match room because the PBC runs boxing. Fuck out of here. Subriel Matias did not leave the PBC for match room because the PBC runs boxing and i don't think jaron ennis just followed him over there because the pbc runs boxing fuck out of here make no mistake this is a loss for al Heyman and his pbc that they were not able to secure this fighter who we all know they wanted to sign and we know their supporters they wanted al Heyman to sign him too make no mistake that this is a loss for them and what they're gonna tell you is he was never signed to the pbc anyway but you wanted him to be you're gonna pretend that you didn't you're gonna play stupid and what do you want me to do you want me to play along go play with yourself it's not a major loss to al Heyman and his pbc an established outfit here in america that they failed to secure unbeaten champion jaron ennis that's not a loss for them no well, i thought eddie hearn didn't know what he was doing i thought that he didn't know the ball from the bounce in america a lot of old narratives really are falling by the wayside day by day week by week month by month but this is good news because now we may get to see this fighter fight more often and live up to the potential that is set before him the expectations the vote of confidence and all of the hyperbole we may yet get the chance to see some of that come into fruition if he's a more active fighter and that's what signing the matchroom can make him more active i'm not even gonna beat around the bush i am gonna have a lot of fun with this trolling the Hamanites. i am gonna have a lot of fun with this boxing insider rick lacier caught wind of the news and reacted by saying realistically ibf world welterweight champion boots and his signing with eddie hearn is another glaring example that the pbc is running on fumes and basically out of money as ennis was wore out from all the al Heyman babula and the pbc propaganda ennis was mandatory as due then it'll probably be connor ben after that ennis bouts will now be shown on the zone there was a story yesterday i came across i wasn't sure if it was true or not that where jaron ennis was supposed to be in negotiations to fight Cody Crowley is mandatory. Cody left him high and dry and instead chose to fight in another eliminator against unbeaten Suleiman Sizoko with a different alphabet organization. I saw that story yesterday, but I wasn't too sure of its validity, if it was true or not. My initial reaction to that story, just whether it was true or not, was that if it is true, this isn't even the first we've heard of an Ennis versus Crowley fight. We've heard about that fight for months. I mean, before the IBF ordered it, way before that, 
we heard about that fight and that they might try to make it, but they never got it over the line. And then it became about a potential Mario Barrios fight, that Boots Ennis would like to fight Mario Barrios, and that the Barrios people shared in that sentiment. Bob Santos, who trains Mario Barrios, he said they would be willing to fight Jaron Ennis, but that never came into fruition. That didn't happen either, and that was last year. So that this year, the IBF can officially order the Cody Crowley fight, but it seems like that was taking a very, very long time to make. So when you think about that, it just seems to me like the PBC had an opportunity to start making things happen for Jaron Ennis, but nothing happened because they don't have the resources to make anything happen. Not for him, not for anybody. We heard rumors, rumors for months, that Jaron Ennis may be fighting on the undercard of Canelo Alvarez's next fight, but Canelo's undercard, it had been announced, Ennis wasn't on it. And that's not the first time we heard rumors like that. We heard rumors like that last year, that Boots was supposed to be coming back on David Benavidez's undercard, then it became David Morrell's undercard, none of which actually happened. Then it was that he might fight on Canelo's undercard. That didn't happen either. You start to get the sense that they couldn't make anything happen for him. Him and his team saw that and they got wise. Decided, you know what, maybe we should go to Matchroom. Eddie wants to sign us, let's see what he can do. Hopefully more than what these guys are doing or what they're not doing. I would like to see David Morrell at 168 pounds make that same decision make that same move that if he has the autonomy to jump ship and leave the PBC, he should do so as soon as possible because they're not going to make anything happen for him either. It's been well over a year now that we've been hearing about this David Benavidez fight, Morel versus Benavidez. They haven't made that happen. It's not going to happen. I'm going to turn the corner real quick. I'm, I'm about to turn the corner because I got to make something be known right now, man. Right, like, we talking about Benavidez and we want to see Benavidez face Canelo. And, and now we're talking about Munguia and so on and so forth. Like, we're talking about, like, Benavidez, like, he's some gangster. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's supposed to dominate Canelo and so on and so forth. I don't think so. I don't think so. And Benavidez, didn't he Didn't he walk away from an opportunity to face against Morel? David Morel in the division? If he's that damn bad, he would have took that fight with Morrell. But the reason why he yeah, exactly he hey, would have took it's the still, fight it's with still Morel, on right? Canelo though, because Canelo you know? had locked James the whole weight class. Everybody's waiting for a shot at Canelo. So and, that's and, the problem. Now nobody wants to fight each other. That's the lock jam you create when you do that, when you're the money. And, and, so, and so now, and so now back to McGee real quick. I just had to throw that out there. You yeah, know you're, right. you're right. It's a great point. <laughs> yeah, he should have not created because of Canelo. Right. But okay. but instead of fighting Morel, what is, what is Benavidez doing? He's going up to go face who? A, more, a, a, a guy that's coming back, closed there, okay? Instead of David Morel, his PBC stablemate. So if you're David Morel and you're watching all of this, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to say? What big fight are they going to make for you? You think they're going to be able to get Jamal Charlo in the ring with him? Or Caleb Plant? Caleb wants to fight Jamal, not David Morel. Can they even keep David busy? Can they keep him active while they fail to secure him? a big fight i believe that david morell if he has the autonomy he needs to get the hell out of there go to matchroom for the same reason subriel matias went to matchroom for the same reason jaron ennis just signed to them because they can at least keep you busy in the absence of a big fight they can still keep you active you can still make money he's got talent and he's wasting time at the pbc